This is a snippet from my real-time back-end system design with WebSockets. If you enjoyed this clip, head to realtime.hosseinnasser.com to get your copy. I hope you enjoy it. There are many configurations because there are many protocols, unlike the streaming thing. And streaming is just we respect the backend. Whatever the backend support, whatever the client and the end backend, those are the goes. Those are the guys that goes. Okay? That's it. With the application proxy in the reverse proxy, we can have H1 on the front end, H1 on the back end. We can have H1 on the back, um, front end, H2 on the back end, right? H2 stream to be specific, right? We can have H2 in the front end and also H2 to the back end. So I, there is H2 stream to another H2 stream, right? And HTTP3 is uh, identical to this, right? You can also have H3 stream to H2, uh, uh, which is... Uh, which is a common thing with the, uh, which is which is which is a common thing you can do. Uh, an example with where you can use H three and then H two backend as as gRPC. gRPC is only supported on G H two, right? So there is this issue that is going on uh, to support gRPC on top of H three. And uh, the owners, the maintainers, they just don't want to do it. They said, why do you want it? Why do you need it? Because, uh, and I kind of sympathize with them. I understand because uh, gRPC is a protocol that you you use almost at the back end. Back end. It's data center. It's functions to functions, right? It's microservices to microservices. It's, 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 it's services backends talking to each other. Not necessarily clients that are far away, but maybe you can have that. So they said, even with that, you can still enable HTTP3. Your reverse proxy becomes advertising HTTP3 as a stream but then that stream just pours in into an h2 stream on the back end so h3 to h2 so yeah you would you would create an h3 stream and that will create an h2 stream on the back end and then you you stream your 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 grpc stuff here and it just goes as data all the way to the to the back end right that's at least that's the idea so that's the workaround they have for this stuff because you really h3 is really only required when you have low internet or bad internet connectivity where you have lost data and you get all this tcp head of line blocking so you on the internet right you can have h3 on the data center you can keep it h2 something like that so so that's, that's just an example of what, what proxying can give you right all right let's do an example what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have an h1 backend and we're gonna have an h1 reverse proxy okay and then we have the client and what will happen is if the client establishes a tcp connection and the client uh, establishes the WebSocket handshake. The, the reverse proxy will turn around and also reserve a connection for that, for that particular connection that was created. And it will be dedicated. Any future messages are sent. The only difference is it can read the frames. The, the reverse proxy read everything, decrypts everything, and, and, and forwards the message to this. So same thing here. So if, if any connection you have, it will go directly to, the, to a dedicated backend, but the only difference is the reverse proxy can see it. So let's, let's dive a little bit deeper so I can show you what, that, what I mean by this. So, so here's, here's what's going to happen, right? So you, you, what you're going to do is not necessarily this will going to happen first. Well, we we will the reverse proxy will establish a connection we'll have a pool of connection on the back end and we'll have them ready and even there will be a tls handshake and everything is ready so there is a ready-made tcp connection that is connected to the back end there is no protocol or there is nothing there uh, negotiated yet it's just there right so that's one way to do it 
so yeah this is like just one way to do it right and i just showed this order that to show you that it doesn't have to be in particular order so now the client establishes a tcp connection and then it does a tls right and what will happen is it will do the get request to do the upgrade and who's going to reply look at this the reverse proxy is replying to us not you see that we're completing the connection the websocket connection with the reverse proxy as if the reverse proxy actually understands the websocket protocol and you have to pick a reverse proxy that actually supports websockets otherwise this this won't work in this particular case okay so we need to do that and then once the connection is completed we will reserve a back-end connection that we either has already established or we can establish it right there and then if one didn't exist or, or the pool is empty so then when we do that then we're gonna turn around and send the git request for the upgrade and then we're gonna do another switching protocol and that will basically will create a new websocket connection for us so we have a websocket connection here and a websocket connection here so we have two and now we mark it that such that any message sent on this connection is now sent immediately on this but the, the reverse proxy actually reads it and understand the message it's completely decrypted because the the tls is terminated right there are two tls connections here not one and then the message is forwarded all the way the same thing if the uh, client sent the message it will be forwarded all the way but the only difference the websocket guys uh, the, the the websocket reverse proxy can actually read it let's spice things up a little bit so now we will we will have an http 1 1 proxy that is connecting to an http2 backend websocket now this proxy is smart it understand it is in itself supports websocket on top of http11 so it can finish a handshake with the client and http11 but it's also capable of understanding the extended connect method that allows us to connect to establish a web hash socket handshake with an http server and those are very rare servers that support this nginx doesn't support this only ha proxy supports this configuration nginx doesn't support h2 on the back end right uh, for some reason that i don't understand it's just a business decision decided not to do it they do support h2 on the front end but not the back end okay so now if i create a connection that connection can be mapped and instead of an a connection it maps to a single stream http2 stream 